Hey everybody, Asher here with more Star Sector. You may ask yourself, what are we doing here? Well, it is point ninety-five a release day. I did have a Star Sector series running previously, but as I mentioned in the video, I will be starting a new series when the new release comes out, and it just kind of snuck up on a lot of people who are paying attention in the middle of the night. It's like, hey, a release version's imminent. I thought it was going to be June. It's March. Here we are. Very exciting. Star Sector 95A, first release for this game, or update content in a few years. Let's go ahead and hit the new game button because there's a few things that have changed, a few things that have stayed the same. This is completely unmodded, but we are going to go ahead and uh, pick through some stuff here. You see that I don't have like the mods that have all of our user faces and everything, but that's okay. We um, have plenty of options available to us here. Um, this is one of those things where maybe I could have set it up a little bit better beforehand, but since this is the new version, we're gonna try to do it kind of like I did before where I'm just the uh, old spacer out in space. That looks pretty cool. I have like a happy little cybernetic eye. We're, we're all feeling really good here. We're not going to be playing iron mode, but we're just going to, we're going to go as Asher Wells again, because there's no um, confusing anything else here. Um, yeah, so these start settings seem pretty much the same so far. These start settings pretty much seem the same so far. We could do a bounty hunter, just having a wolf class frigate, uh, commanding a wayfarer class combat freighter. I think I will do the apogee start this time um, just so I can try to get on my feet a little bit faster and kind of get into the meat and potatoes. Maybe when I get a little bit further on or some mods go in, I can do something with like just a tiny ass start. But we're going to do this. However, so we have an Apogee, a Condor, a Wayfarer, a Combat Freighter, a Shepherd Drogue Tender, and a Dram class tanker. We get 18,000 gold. Um, the first uh, campaign difficulty level easy is recommended for a first time player. We're going to go with normal, and this time we're going to skip the tutorial. So, one thing that is immediately apparent and changing here, and I did read a little bit about this, is that we have all of our combat skills, and they're all kind of doing their own thing. We get to pick one sort of specialization that we can try to build our way into. It's very different from uh, last time where we had a few different things available. So, skill point, skill point requires navigation and sensors. So... It's kind of like working your way up the ladder, which means if we do want to have, we're, we're gonna. This means that like some of the things that we really like, that are back here, pretty much everything I really like, is um on the back burner here. So let's just go with what's gonna be good at the very beginning. Um, weapon drills, okay. We can do bulk transport, or and see those are ore, so that works. That works for you. We can pick one or the other. Um, sensors. Affects the fleet plus three the burn when the fleet's considered moving slowly plus one to maximum burn level um, Increases burn bonus for sustained burn. I like that one pretty well um, 900 to combat rating for militarized subsystems 10% weapon damage for combat ships. That's cute 50% um, uh, stuff here and there's elite things as well. That'll give us some other bonuses um Wow, plus 50% uh, cargo capacity. That's really nice. I think navigation's a good starting point, though. So let's start the game. Like I said, this is just as new to me as it is to anybody else who's loading up the update and didn't play in any of the pre-release beta, alpha, whatever have you. So we're just going to kind of dive in and see how it goes. So, look at us. We are starting next to Jangala, the jungle world of the hegemony. We have contracts that are potentially available to us. Technically, if this is anything like the original um, situation here, there are still some ships that we can salvage over at Tetra. We just don't have to worry about freeing these guys and going through all that. Like I said, we can just dive in, but you can see already we have some a little bit of different fleet graphics. These things are all scary as hell. So let's look here. This is this is us. Um, fortunately, our uh, we have a mining blaster and a tactical laser, a pylum LRM. So pretty much a lot of things that are not my favorite. But we do have surveying equipment, which could be really useful for us. I'm not going to mess too much with this right now. It's just because this is the first playthrough. I kind of want to go through and see what we have. Of course, we have talons. Um, on the Condor, um, 
but we do have a little bit of money that we can work with. So one of the big th questions of the day that always comes up is when you get kind of plopped down into the world, what the hell do you do with it? Which by the way, since we didn't do the tutorial, we're not going to be getting our uh, three year allowance. Maybe that disappears completely anyway, um, but that's fine. We'll um, go ahead and make do in March here. Probably want to see real quick. We don't have too much here. We don't have any other officers. Um, let's take a look out in the sector real quick. So we have a pretty big spread of worlds. We have we have a lot of black holes kind of to the south, to the east. There's a really good collection here to the north. Um, in terms of, uh, oh wow, we have two yellow star systems right next to each other. So we'll want to try to explore over here this uh, double orange star system could be good but probably not um yeah there's a there's a whole lot of changes that we're just we're just gonna have fun exploring here that's really what this is all about so let's see if we can get ourselves a little contract um it looks like we have uh somebody is patrolling are they coming for us is the question no they're just patrolling so we can open a comm directory here's all these people we have an officer that's available for hire what can you do? You have damage control available. They've changed how officers work as well. A steady officer with damage control. Um, I'm not going to hire you just yet. Um, another thing that's changed, by the way, is buying from the black market is a lot riskier. Now, one of the most common opinions, and I agree with it, is that black market was pretty much just a really easy go-to for doing anything in the game. So now we don't really have that option. I mean, we can buy from the black market, but it's just going to kind of end up making us pay a little bit more. So let's see. We have, we ha we're almost capped at uh, people. We can carry, we can shepherd a few things around here. I was kind of hoping to see if we could maybe, we have, we have a good fuel. Um, there's a frigate that doesn't cost very much. It won't increase our cargo capacity by a lot. So maybe maybe we just work with what we have for now. Shuttle the dockside bar. There's a man with a paper book and see what he wants. And I think that picture's new. Approach the quartermaster and offer to buy him a drink. So we're going to do both of these. So gravel the McCur uh, Nakurma. Go over the man with the paper book and see what he wants. Welcome, welcome. Please have a seat. I'm sure you're wondering why I called you over. He leans as if conspiring. I think we can help each other, you and I. See, I have this information. He taps the book and you have the means. I am what you might call a historian adventurer, a rogue archaeologist uncovering history of the sector, despite the danger of its exceptional era, of this exceptional era. In the course of my studies, I often chance upon hints about where certain pieces of technology might be found. Retrieving these artifacts is naturally your role in this arrangement would, only if you're interested, of course. But I've done my research on your exploits, whatever they may be, because we just started the game. And I'm sure you'd be interested. Speech complete. He leans back, looking please. I expect you'll be wanting to get paid for this information. A weird expression passes over the man's face just for a moment before resuming his energetic demeanor. I understand why you would assume that. This is indeed a mercenary age, but no, nothing quite so transactional. History is an uncertain trade, and such approach would lead to an ex expectations, disappointment, and recrimination. All of which I'm eager to avoid, especially the last of those. An additional wrinkle forms over his face at this however if you do find my information valuable i would gladly accept donations think of it as as patronage to fuel my research which in turn would produce valuable leads or it might help to think of it as an investment but with no obligations incurred by either party consider it if you would enrich your own enterprises while contributing to the sum of human knowledge well do you have anything for me now so the historian tells you about a possible location of a blueprint for a Cobra bomber it requires a story point and does not grant any bonus experience. We have zero story points right now. If we had done the tutorial, maybe we would have gotten some story points. Oh, Earth Mother Terror from whence we came long gone. Uh, the Ludics aren't completely wrong in their stories, though. They, him, possessed few qualms about improving most details to appeal of a uh, 
quotation morale framing. The historical record is far more complex, far more difficult, far more relatable in the end, I believe. Every day we survive by powerful technologies, which any one of us barely understands and which may unleash truly apocalyptic destruction. Mistakes are made, tragedies results, it is only a question of scale. He considers this for a moment, then begins mumbling a critical response to his own thoughts, but scale can indeed fundamentally change the quality and phenomena, hence the contextual of moral dimension hmm, entirely hmm so we end this conversation you thank him see you again somewhere so what happens is that uh, one of the things that's been added in the update is that we have people that are pretty much can give us kind of quests it's a lot like a star traders frontiers where you have different individuals that can send you on missions and stuff but we need story points um, we have a quartermaster as well um, and he's uh, he was shipped 45 transplutonics and we have 75 heavy machinery. Um, we're not going to do a swap. All right. So not really a lot of great business here for us. There is the uh, abandoned mining platform. And uh, if we do travel over here. Nice thing, first off, is that we should be able to travel pretty damn fast. Um, we actually have a lot of missions available. A domain error probe that's really far away from the core worlds. Probably a little too far. Analyze the derelict ship for pirates. The Corvus Gate and the Corvus System, a silent ring. A derelict of a former age. Um, survey a crypto volcanic world. That's probably close enough. And it puts us... Um, I mean, the Ludic Church is not my least favorite group of people. Um, we do need some more crew and some more heavy machinery, but we can we can work on that in just a minute because we have 120 days to do it. So let's confirm. Ludic Church, you get our uh, first here, and we actually have system bounties for both of these places for fighting pirates, and we also have a smuggler that's traveling around. So um, we're just gonna kind of see where the game takes us as usual with Star Sector. Um, Com directory, we have a freelance administrator. We're going to be needing more of those because, as you saw, the colony management is kind of tucked away really far. We have a tough-looking man wearing a powered armor suit. We have a concerned man walk over to his table or an arms dealer about buying illegal weapons. Any of those are pretty good. Let's go to the concerned man. I have 500 units of food. Um, and we could try to negotiate a better fee for this my offer is 180 credits he wants us to take this to the persian league i have uh we can accommodate 423 additional cargo used to be in the old version you actually couldn't uh do that let's see what the um what the places have available because i wouldn't mind taking that if i could just get something that'll let me get a little bit more cargo here and i'm not really sure if it's if what we have to build it's actually a pirate cruiser right away that's pretty cool and an omen all the way down here yeah too a little a little bit of kind of crazy stuff here um, but it doesn't look like we have too many freighters this is probably the one we want though um mac on wayfarer custom freighter it has one d mod it costs a good chunk of money um like i said there is probably another place where we can get a little bit more but we're gonna go ahead and buy this um, I think we bought it from the open market. It's fine if we did. Um, so our fleet here, we're just going to auto fit this. We're not going to buy ordnance from the shop or black market. Strip before auto fitting is fine. We'll just do standard here and let this thing go over there. So we have two ordnance points left because we don't have a lot of gear. So if we go back to the concerned man, look over his table. That's a that's a pitiful pitiful amount, but that's fine arm dealer about buying illegal weapons so as you approach um the bodyguard's attention focuses like a sweep of a cap ship targeting array the arms dealer stands them down with a flick of her hand you must know who i am and i know why you're here she says let us talk like friends the arm dealer leans in and uh, privacy fields blurs around the booth muffling outside sound the smoke of a trendy drug stick starts to fill the bubble due to the dampened atmospheric motion 
I can supply custom construction for up to 50,000 credits worth of rare ships and weapons at a very reasonable 300% of base cost. I guarantee delivery of product within 60 days and absolute discretion. She, she slides a battered tripod over the table. It never hurts to take a look. So, we could get some weapons. Just weapons. And um, we, we obviously can't afford that right now, but... It's pretty cool that um, this is, once again, another new feature in the game. Chat with the tough-looking man wearing a powered armor undersuit here. He looks he looks tough enough. You approach, maintaining your cool despite the withering stare. The man laughs at your composure and welcomes you to sit on a gust of eye-watering liquor fumes. I like you, he exclaims to the entire bar, which ignores and shouts. You're not a little a scared little dirt worm. Your new best friend is full of boasts and brags, and you're surprised to discover that he is sharper than he looks, and he slips pointed questions about your background, his capabilities, and into his braggadocia. Thank you. Really good writing here for the uh, update. I'm enjoying this even just a few minutes in. Adopting a lower voice, but keeping his eyes scanning the room, he says, A level, Captain. You can handle your flux. I respect that. I'm wondering if you want to get in on a job with me. He smiles, showing off a full set of titanium teeth. Want to know more? Well, do tell, best friend. Um, there is a Shrike D-Class light destroyer collecting space dust in a lightly guarded orbital hangar. I made a plan to jack the ship. My original sponsor got cold feet. Dirt worm, like I said. It'd be a waste not to do a job after all the work. I got somatics of the hangar, security codes, the guards, schedule, everything. I even come along on the operation, so you know it's at my prices. 4,900 credits. Uh, non-negotiable. All you need to provide is at least 20 marines for this to work cleanly. I don't expect any active resistance, but the guards gotta be covered. So, what's the detailed vessel here? A shrike! Um, it does have lasting damage, um, and damage weapon mounts, but a Shrike is still a Shrike. Um, so we don't have the sufficient Marines to get the operation here, but I'm kind of thinking about it. The only problem is we can't actually buy Marines here, but maybe we can buy it at the, uh, other space place so let's go up here because this is military so they should be able to sell it and um we can see how this goes so like i said we're not doing the immediate oh man i forgot to get the uh delivery contract as well it should still be there um or maybe i didn't forget to do it because i i have cargo full of stuff here so um we can buy marines here we can even buy black market marines. We're not going to buy black market marines, but we're going to try and stay on the up and up. He says we need 20 marines. Um, so that's fine. We can't we can't play with our money too bad right now. So we're just going to stay on the up and up here. We got a few things that we can buy, but for now we're just going to try and keep our heads clean. Um, four supplies is all that takes. Um, all right. But yeah, I'll do this for a shrike. That's for sure. So we got active sensor burst. We've got um, an unidentified contact over here. So we don't really know what they're doing, but let's go back to the dockside bar and uh, target vessel. We agree to it. It's simple enough to sneak two teams into the orbital hangar on shuttles disguised as civilian logistics drones as unlucky micro uh, meteorite impact ensures that rudimentary comms module is out of commission then an input error by someone with full security access resets the hangar's power systems disabling internal sensors and the centuries outdated door locks your team of hand-picked marines catches the guards completely by surprise interesting interesting so we paid four thousand for a shrike that's awesome. You watch uh, the hollow feet as Thomas Furious grins through his faceplate and pulls the manual docking release himself. Your new ship floats free from the hangar, its new skeleton crew stowing sidearms and uh, taking bridge con consoles as the power comes through. So Thomas Furious, we've improved relations. Pirates are, uh, we've actually improved relations by one. Um, you return to the bar and share a glass of that noxious spirit with Thomas Furious. That was fun, Captain. I'll steal another ship with you anytime you like. He says loud enough for everybody nearby to hear, though they're wise enough to pretend they didn't. All right, so look at that. We have a Shrike. Um, Shrikes are fun. 
Um, let's take let's take a look and see if anything's really changed about it. They're they're little energy boats here, and this one is like like we're in the very beginning of the game, so there's a lot of things that we'd love for them to have that they don't really have. Um, we'll put an annihilator rocket pod on it because that's available. But we've really got to kind of watch our money here. Um, a medium energy turret here. We got mining blasters available. We got a heavy blaster available as well, but I think the small turrets here. Um, sorry for buying from the black market independence. Um, and then we're just going to auto fit from here. And um, we're going to make it an attack one. And let's see. Un unstable injectors, fine, I guess. The nice thing about the shrike, can I get the, um, inf the ship info here? Um, Okay, maybe, maybe not. We'll we'll pull that up in just a minute. Um, auto assign the weapons here. There's seven, there are seven slots here for this. We don't need them for that many, but uh, there are a few there are a few UI things to consider as well. While we're here, let's just make sure that we have our uh, places here. Mining blaster still not my favorite, but we're at the very beginning of the game, so it's fine. Repair ships at the shipyard for seven here, and if we look at our fleet button here. This is where we get the uh, information. Provides a brief engine boost, propelling the ship forward at an extreme velocity. So we've already we've already got a little bit of stuff here. We have we have some missions like food delivery over to Tile. We have another accepted mission to visit this black hole, um, the Alpha New Biscay black hole. But the first thing I want to actually do is see if this still works. Let's see if we can actually salvage some extra ships to kind of give us some oomph. Plus, it gives us a chance to visit um, some other people here. By the way, do I I actually get to keep the Marines? That's pretty interesting. Okay, so order jump into hyperspace. And uh, we're in hyperspace. Don't show me this again. I'm probably going to need to buy some fuel before too long. Fortunately, we didn't get in too much of a fight there. Uh, minor weapons cache. Where are you? Um, probably, probably a little too far. And we want to try to go over here because we have we have enough cash to buy some fuel if it comes down to it. I'd love to get another contract though. So we have a debris field which you should be able to only get at once. We have Gal Galadia Academy Station, which is I guess. A little newer here we discovered a gate as well but I want to start by seeing if uh, Tetra actually has the goods here still and we'll autopilot to it it's fine we have uh, some supplies we're gonna need a little more supplies to make this work like I said this is one of those things where even though you skip the tutorial the tutorial stuff is all there but that's in the old version of the game and for all I know this is all very new and exciting but like I said I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing uh, any comments any thoughts that people have on this or my strategy or the gameplay as well it looks like we have a lot of sensor contacts here so this is still kind of preserved and while i'm at it here i don't normally ask for this but it really does help especially because not enough people know about star sector um, if you do want more people to know about this if you see someone playing star sector give their video a like if you want to give me a like that's fine too but um, there's i'm definitely not the only content creator that's doing anything with this so let's see what um what we can get for free um, we can explore, we can consider ship recovery, and this is a wolf, that's fine. Let's recover. All right. Some ships in your fleet are in dangerous, uh, dangerously low combat readiness. I know. That's way too far. Although I am interested in all the black holes up there. There's a hammerhead, like I said before in my last series. Um, there is always a hammerhead that you can get here. We're not below... Um, our crew number yet, but we're gonna we're we're starting to push it. Um, Condor class light carrier. I said early game condors are fine. Interesting. Um, begin salvage. We can consider whether we take special measures to recover the ship. Um, how much do we care about recovering a condor? Talk talk. Uh, take a look at the chief engineer's report and um, make a decision. That may involve story points here. Um, difficult recovery. We don't actually have enough story points, so that's fine. We got to get through some story missions to do that, so I need to consider my options. We're just going to salvage. 
I mean, this is this is all useful stuff too. So another derelict ship. Um, it's just going to be the same thing here. Get what we can, salvage the rest. There's a buffalo. And um, a kite. Pirates want me to survey a barren world that's way too far away. Um, we're just going to salvage this. Like, we don't want to be getting into too many fights. But we can at least take some of the early ships. Alright, so Taurus class freighter. Would love to have that. Um, once again, though... We can't do this because we are missing story points. Enables you to take actions that are some way uh, hard here. You will gain four story points over the course of each level. In addition, you will continue to gain story points after reaching the maximum level. So pretty much... We're going to leave this here. If we need it later, we can come back and get it later. So like if we look over here, we get a story point for every time we cross some of this threshold, which means the correct play for people that are looking at this later on down the line is that I should have done those delivery missions first, but it's okay. We've, uh, I, I am happy to take the lumps, so you don't have to. All right. So we're going to be going back to that jump point, hopefully not getting blasted by any pirates. Like, I haven't downloaded any... Mo Ooh, did not mean to do that. Um, continue the autopilot, please. Don't know why mousing up and mousing down did that, but... Your old ships, we, we just took them, guys. We literally just took them. We don't have enough money to really do a lot with the hammerhead yet, but we're going to um, hold on to it for now. Um, take a shuttle to the dockside bar. There's a woman taking military bounties... Um, I have an assignment on the docket. She looks down scrolling through her coffee pad. What sort of job can you handle? Um, let's ask for a manageable target. Um, a ludic path operative connected to a few bombings. Piracy, the usual. She's handing out the Borlo star system. That's a 15 light year hop. We've got 120 days to do it. All right, she taps the pad and an intel assessment shows up. It's actually really nice. I like that it's presented like this. So we have an attack frigate, a kite... I think we can do that. So we got a pather bounty. Approach the man uh, looking at underworld bounties. So every everybody here it just kind of wants to do the quilted quicker picker upper. Um, ooh, uh, he's commanding a hegemony patrol fleet operating out of here and three systems. Are you a pirate? Do you actually want me to attack? Uh, okay. I don't know if I want to take this, guys. Because I'm going to ask about another one of the targets here. Yeah, we're, we're going to... Um, maybe another time. I need to learn a little bit more about... Uh, if I'm in hegemony space, do I really want to be um, taking on some of these other people? But I do need to get some weapons, and I don't have a ton of money yet. So let's see kind of what we can buy. Like, we can buy some Arbalist autocannons. That's probably fine for you. Like, this one comes with a heavy mortar. Um, Hypervelocity driver. I'd love a second heavy mortar. Sorry, we're just going to buy from the black market here. Railgun is fine. Uh, hybrid turn. I'd love another point defense laser. Long range point defense laser is great. And we have some small missile hard points as well. I don't know what a breach SRM is. I'm not sure if that's new or not, but... Um, we're going to take some of the um, Artipost class uh, torpedo racks because these have multiple torpedoes. They're highly explosive. It's a lot of fun. And um, what's this over here? Is this a rail gun? Maybe we just take the light auto cannon. Okay. And then if we do this, we definitely want to have... Um, hardened subsystems if at all possible I'd love to have a flux distributor on this to do auxiliary thrusters as well and go back and just lots of vents some capacitors this thing's just gonna be this thing's just gonna be slow but that's fine uh, weapon groups 
in case I ever need to pilot this thing. Um, we're going to do it like this. All right. So should be good. Any other um, new ships? We have the Shrike, which is doing its thing. We have, um, yeah, we have all these, we have all these little dudes. And you know what? Um, small missile, small missile. Dual light auto cannon, that's fine. I'll put you as a support. Medium energy hardpoint. Harpoon MRM is nice. We like those. Um, mining blaster, sure, why not? And uh, we'll just we'll just auto fit this for assault. That's fine. We should we should be able to um, adjust weapon groups auto assign. That's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure we have our uh, ships that we want to have where we want to have them here. Like here's our freighter, here's our other stuff. Um, we're still really good on crew. Um, I'm kind of liking this. Um, we don't. We need some more supplies and we need some more fuel though. So let's go ahead and um, see. The black market doesn't have a lot of supplies anyway, so we don't really care. That takes. That costs way too much. That costs. That costs a lot. All right. So if we do a hundred fuel and we do fifty supplies. We've got we've got some contracts to turn in anyway, so we've given ourselves a lot of jobs, and that's really exciting. Um, let's see. We repair ships at the shipyard does take forty supplies, um, and now we take two point four supplies per day. So if we look out at the map here, that's that's the Intel map, but this is fine. We have a Pather bounty that's all the way down here that we got one hundred and twenty days to do. So he's affiliated with the Hegemony. He's looking. So, all right, so this would actually make the, uh, huh, well, maybe I should have read the fine print a little bit more, um, but that's okay. I guess we'll see how this goes and kind of figure it out from there. Um, I wasn't really wanting to piss off the hegemony right away. We do have all these things. We do have all these things anyway, so there's a barren world that I haven't accepted. But if we're possibly going down there, then maybe we do. Um, food delivery first, for sure. And then uh, the crypto volcanic world up here seems fine. We have two more Dominion Arrow Probe quests that have been withdrawn. So let's deliver that food. Where's it going? To uh, units to Cibola. Cibola in the tile system. All right, so let's see if we have a picket come after us. Sometimes they will. I only bought a few weapons. How bad can it be? I'm very curious too about um, our income situation. Since we don't have our little stipend, our fleet is not charging anything yet. So we'll see how that goes. But um, maintaining contact with the fleet, um, they're running from our fleet. Do I take this fight? I feel like I should take this fight. Let's take this fight. Uh, we can make a uh, we can maneuver force a pitch battlefield. So let's pursue them and see if we can get some experience here. Um, I could order my second command to do it, but since we're just beginning here, I really kind of want to do it myself. Um, we're going to deploy. Um, oh wow, they actually have different options for how to deploy it. We're going to um, not deploy you, but we'll deploy all you guys. So. It's going to cost us a net of 10 supplies to maybe do this. Let's have everybody follow me. Like, all right. So we have some, we have some high tech shit. We have an Apogee again. So that's all, it's all good here. Get the requisite screenshot. And it looks like you're trying to uh, save your people. We could fire the pillum. We don't really need the long distance rockets here though. Let's just see let's just see if we can get a little bit closer. Alright, so our lasers are doing some work. Like I said, the, the goal of this as always is to outflux somebody else. So once we get your shields down, 
this is the ship we're really interested in taking out. So if you're going to die so the rest of your fleet may live, that's fine. We will, we will accept that sacrifice. Like right now, my, my flux is fine. Actually have some pretty good missiles here. And uh, for some reason, our missiles kind of got confused. But there's the hammerhead doing hammerhead things. So there's our explosion that still eats up the whole screen. So we win and we took um, um, the enemies defeated. We'll let them go. We really only took out one ship and we got a few credits. The rest of them ran away. If we pick through the wreckage, we get a few things. We get some heavy machine guns too, which is nice. And um, we get some money from a system bounty. Nice. We got one story point to spend. Nice. I could use that to get that freighter, but we're going to save it for a rainy day. Um, now, I do have a, I have a story point, not a skill point. All right, so your fleet supply consumption has just gone up. That's correct, because I have um, just been in combat, and we're trying to get back our combat readiness. We understand how this works. So to hyperspace. So there's our first combat victory. Only took out one ship. But yeah, this will be... I'm not going to call this a do-over or anything, but it is it is nice to be flying an Apogee again. We are just going to keep trying to look for places that are reasonably close, which is not those. What else is new? Um, I already, I already have that one. Okay. Ludic Path Cell active. Cute. We actually have some firefights over here as well. So once again, into the breach we go. Hopefully those are not pirates. Because there's a lot of things that can kick our ass right now. And that would be an inauspicious start. But one of the things that I learned from getting back into this game before is that sometimes you've really just got to know when to run. And you have to just run. You can't just sit there and say, I'm going to take on every fight because I've been blasting away at everybody. Sometimes if you get surrounded by a really nasty fleet, you've just got to let go and say, you know what? I am D.E.D. -E dead. Alright, so we're going to get a little bit of a launch there. Um, survey the gas giants. Once again, these, these exploration missions are nice, but they're really far away. So we need to watch our fuel consumption. We actually need to get quite a bit of fuel. Um, we're almost a tile. We pretty much just drove all the way across the... Uh, systems here um why are some of our ships at low combat readiness oh must have been because you took some damage all right well this is fine we want to take this to uh we want to take this to any of these places so ordering a jump is fine all right so cibolo over here should be good hopefully the uh, Persian League who I may still want to get a commission with because you can't buy capital ships off the black market in this new version so we're gonna have to work a little harder towards a commission uh, that may be what we want but first things first I've got to refill my coffers here um, which means making this delivery uh, we go over here we get 500 food we get rid of 500 food we gain a little bit of money um, the dockside bar over here. Find out what that rakish woman at the end of the bar is doing. Um, and she's saying the reward is 58,000 credits. Let's just read this. The woman watches you approach. You want in on some business. That's right. Let me give you a job so easy that any rad adult spacer could manage it. But she shrugs. Uh, she shrugs what? She says, amuse at your audacity. Uh, she shrugs regretfully. It's a real shame how many of them just can't follow instructions and end up getting tossed out of the airlock. She laughs like this is a good joke. Deliver me the item, uh, the specified location in Delta Gold Motley System, 17 light years away. The reward is 58,000 credits. Don't be seen making the drop and don't tell anyone about it. I'm going to decline. Just because I have a few places I want to go already. We do need to do a few repairs. We do need to kind of resupply here. Um, I could sell these marines, but it's it's kind of nice to have, I guess. Let's see what um, ships are available here, too. Like, I'm pretty good with what I have so far. I have a 
I have a thousand cargo space, which is great. But yeah, not not too much doing here right now. On the black market, there is a champion heavy cruiser. That looks like a new ship. Champion class heavy cruiser, versatile warship, um, large missile, large energy, medium hybrid, and eight small. That's fascinating. And it's kind of expensive. But that seems like a pretty good line in between the um, sort of cruisers here and the actual... Oh, I mean, it's called a heavy cruiser. It's literally, it's literally dancing on that line. Um, I don't think I have too much more... I want to buy here especially when I'm looking over at my sad sad fuel count and my sad sad supply count and if we look at fuel range right now we are we are not getting to this black hole on the fuel we have so we've got to prioritize fuel and we've got to prioritize supplies over anything else once again I'm not gonna buy off the black market once again very nice the black market doesn't actually have a lot of the stuff available kind of dissuades buying or selling from it I'm just going to buy out the fuel. That's fine. And uh, how many supplies can I afford? Because what our bread and butter is going to be as this game goes on is salvaging other stuff. That's one reason I wanted to take the Apogee. So that's going to make us almost broke. But it's fine. We even paid the tariffs here because we're trying to be good little uh, space cubbies here and not pull any shit from anybody so i could be doing um a little bit of moving around from uh space to space um we do have a potential contact of uh their low importance for trade 30 days left to develop and we do have a uh, pirate activity over here so these little updates are going to keep coming up here but where we're going to be going next we just delivered some food and now we can actually make it to Alpha Biscay, and more importantly, hopefully we can make it back. But that's it for now. This is Asher, uh, Star Sector Point Ninety Five A. As you can see, there are already some very substantial changes. I want to wrap my head a little bit more around this system and how it works. I have a better idea now of how the story point system works. I apologize for not reading the tool tips before. Feel free to like this video if you liked it. Uh, definitely tell me more in the comments if you want to know more about this game. Um, Star Sector is a lot of fun and I look forward to a new series with you guys. This is a continuation of the viewer's choice from before, but um, Star Sector, it's good, good stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll do this again soon. Take care.